Welcome everyone to our Wednesday Bible study and devotional. I am glad that you are with us. We are going tonight to be into chapter number 23 of the book of Joshua. We're getting closer and closer to the end. Our plan is to look at Joshua chapter 23 tonight and and then uh, Lord willing next time we'll wrap everything up in Joshua chapter 24. We have seen some exciting things happen uh, in this uh, great book of the Bible as uh, God's people are fighting life's battles and they've been told all along to be strong and courageous and the Lord would provide for them uh, this promised land of Canaan and and as we get into chapter 23 and 24, some of this is going to feel like summary. It's uh, a, a Joshua reiterating and uh, fo- helping the people to stay focused. And as we uh, get into the text tonight, our big idea is going to be holding fast and uh, be looking for that phrase, holding fast. And And uh, I'm excited to uh, be with you for a little while This evening, I'm in Joshua chapter 23, beginning in verse number one. Now it came to pass a long time after the Lord had given rest to Israel from all their enemies round about that Joshua was old, advanced in age. And Joshua called for all Israel, for their elders, for their heads, for their judges and for their officers and said to them, I am old, advanced in age. You have seen all that the Lord your God has done to all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he who has fought for you. See, I have divided to you by lot those nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes from the Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off as far as the great sea western. And the Lord your God will expel them from before you and drive them out of your sight. So you shall possess their land as the Lord your God has promised you. Therefore, be very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, lest you turn aside from it to the right hand or to the left, and lest you go among these nations, these who remain among you. You shall not make mention of the names of their gods and cause anyone to swear by them. You shall not serve them nor bow down to them. But you, here we go, verse number eight, shall hold fast to the Lord your God as you have done this day. As Christians, we need to hold fast. One of the the songs that we often sing uh, is hold to God's unchanging hand. Time is filled with swift transition. Naught of earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Trust in him who will not leave you, whatsoever years may bring. If by earthly friends forsaken, still more closely to him cling. Cover not this world's vain riches that so rapidly decay. Seek to gain the heavenly treasures. They will never pass away. When your journey is completed, if to God you have been true, Fair and bright, the home and glory, your enraptured soul will view. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. So what does it mean to hold fast? Well, to hold fast by by definition is the idea of continuing to believe in. Uh, It's a continued adherence to an idea or principle. Uh, Holding fast that carries with it the idea of being uh, tightly secured, uh, the idea of being anchored. Uh, We, uh, I'm sure you all, well, we all know what an anchor does, right? You're in a boat and you're in the water and uh, you get that anchor, you put that anchor, and that anchor uh, connects uh, to under the to the ground there, uh, under the water, and uh, you're able to to hold your position, and uh, you're able to stay put. It's the idea of, of stay focused, um, not compromising, not budging, uh, sit tight, and. Uh, being able to uh, persevere and 
uh, continue. And that's what we're, we're trying to do. We're, we're trying to, to hold fast. Uh, I, uh, it's been 13 years since I defended my dissertation and, and uh, I was uh, talking to Mitzi and some others uh, about this uh, recently. And, and um, in my research, I developed this uh, Christian therapy model that um, that I've been utilizing to try to help folks, um, and it, it was um, it's called appreciative Christian therapy, and it's um, there's the four D cycle. Don't want to get too technical here, but uh, the first D is discover, uh, discover the past. Okay, what what has given you satisfaction in the past? Second D is dreaming about the future. Uh, what is it that you would like to accomplish? What is it that you want, that you would like to, to see happen um, in, the, in the future? So we discover and we dream and then we design uh, in the present. And uh, this is where the hard work comes in. We know where we've been. We know where we want to go. And so now we've got we've to work some things out. We've got to design. We've got to make some changes. And so we've got to make some, some decisions. And then after you design the plan, then the fourth D is destiny. And, and destiny is, the, is the, continuing, the continuation of what you have designed. And it's the continuation it, uh, it's, which requires uh, perseverance. It requires uh, continued momentum. Uh, it, it, it requires you uh, to be able to uh, adhere to and to, to, to hold fast to what you believe in and, and what it is that you are trying to accomplish. Well, our destiny as Christians is heaven. It's the promised land of heaven. And we want to make sure that that our destiny is secure and we have made the decision to become Christians and we're living uh, the faithful Christian life now and we've got to hold fast in the future. We need to continue in the future. One of the things that stands out in the book of Joshua is the constant reminders that the people receive of how good God has been to them for their obedience, for their courage, for their fighting the battles as the Lord is also fighting uh, with them. But also these constant reminders that you need to watch out and be aware that just because you've lived faithful in the past doesn't necessarily mean you have an, an automatic golden ticket for the future. You've got to hold fast. You've got to continue. You can't compromise. Stay focused and live faithfully to the Lord. You, we see these uh, these warnings, verse number seven in the text about uh, idolatry and and serving down to uh, serving and bowing down to these false gods. Uh, a little bit later uh, down into the text, uh, there's some mentioning uh, about how God is, um, as far as verse 12, uh, making marriages uh, with them, uh, these uh, unfaithful people, these non- uh, men and women uh, of God, uh, stay faithful to the Lord and don't allow anyone or anything to distract you from what is uh, eternally important. And that promise dropping down to verse number 15 is there. Okay, but again, the warning. So the Lord, well, verse 15, therefore it shall come to pass. That is all the good things you have come upon you, which the Lord God promised you. So the Lord will bring upon you all harmful things until he has destroyed you from this good land, which the Lord your God has given you. When, verse 16, you have transgressed the covenant, your God. We need a hold fast. We can't transgress. We don't want to move forward into sin. We want to stay put in faithfulness because what will happen when we transgress what will happen when we do not hold fast verse 16 when we've done these things and have gone and served other gods and have bowed down to them 
the anger of the Lord will burn against you, and you shall perish quickly from the good land which he has given you. A few passages of scripture from the New Testament that capture this idea of holding fast. The phrase hold fast appears approximately 28 times in scripture, just depending on what translation you may be looking at. I've been studied this evening out of the, the New King James uh, Version, but uh, a handful <coughs> of passages for your uh, consideration about holding uh, fast. First Corinthians chapter 15, beginning in verse number one. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received in which you stand, for by which you also are saved. If you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. And verse three and four, the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and he was raised up. We've got to be able, of course, to hold on to this gospel, this good news of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Philippians chapter number two, we're looking at a, a, a brief, a, just a handful of scriptures here dealing with this idea of holding fast. Philippians chapter two, beginning in verse number 14. Do all things without murmuring and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless Children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. When we hold fast to this word of life, it's going to help us to, to be more rejoicing, to be more joyful, and to be less complaining, to do less complaining, to do less murmuring. Uh, there's a lot of things in this life that if we try to gravitate towards or hold on to this crooked and perverse generation, we're, we're going to uh, end up uh, like that. those winds uh, from last night. And we're thankfully all of our, our folks are, are safe from that, that storm that, that passed through. But uh, we need to hold fast the word of life. And as we hold fast, we're going to have more and more joy. We're going to have less and less complaining. And uh, what a what a great thing that would be. Paul says it this way in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, very succinctly and very uh, to the point. Uh, look, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. Test all things. Hold fast what is good? We can't just automatically assume that everyone and everything in this world is, is good and wholesome. We've got to, to test all things and then make that choice. We'll talk more about that next time as far as choosing whom we're going to serve. But we need to test all things and uh, those things that are good, we need to hold on to. Those things that are bad, those things that are sinful, those things that are evil, we got to get rid of. Uh, we got to repent of. We got to a move away from and to hold fast to what is good. Second uh, Timothy chapter one, verse number 13. Second Timothy chapter one, verse 13. Hold fast the pattern of sound words, which you have heard from me in faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. We need to hold fast to the doctrine of Christ, to the to the word of God. This idea of being sound means healthy and, and balanced. And so as we allow the pattern of sound words, there is a pattern. There is in Scripture. And this pattern is something that we need to hold on to. And as we read and study the word of God, we'll... And learn about the pattern of God's plan for salvation, including repenting of sins and confessing faith, being baptized. We learn about the pattern for the Lord's church uh, in regards to how we are to worship, how we are to be organized, how we are to, to reach out to the world, and the pattern of how to live our lives. 
And ultimately, Jesus Christ is our pattern. He is our perfect example. And then finally, the book of Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews uh, is a great connection uh, to the, the book of Joshua. And that's one of the things I've come to further appreciate and, and learn and be reminded of uh, as we've gone through this book, that a lot of thoughts out of the book of Joshua are captured for us in, in the book of, of Hebrews. Uh, three verses in Hebrews uh, carry with it this idea of holding uh, fast. Hebrews 3, verse number 6, But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. Chapter 4, verse number 14, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. And essentially it's repeated again in chapter 10 of Hebrews, verse number 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope. And notice that next phrase, without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Yes, uh, the Lord is faithful. He has made promises uh, to us. And we are, we, we saw earlier in the book of Joshua that all of God's promises have passed. None of them come to fail. And that very same principle is repeated there in Joshua chapter 23. And so we want to hold fast to this confidence. We want to hold fast uh, to this uh, confession. There is a there's another song that we sing that I was reminded of, and and if we were all together and had time to sing, we would. Uh, this would be a good one. Uh, the song "Will Your Anchor Hold in the Storms of Life When the Clouds Unfold Their Wings of Strife When the Strong Tides Lift and the Cables Strain Will Your Anchor Drift or Firm Remain?" It is safely moored, twill the storm withstand, for tis well secured by the Savior's hand. And the cables pass from his heart to mine, can defy the blast through strength divine. It will firmly hold in the straits of fear, when the breakers have told the reef is near. Though the tempests rave and the wild winds blow, not an angry wave shall arc our bark or flow. It will securely hold in the floods of death when the water's cold chill our latest breath. On the rising tide it can never fail while the hopes abide within the veil. When our eyes behold through the gathering night the city of gold, our harbor bright, we shall anchor fast by the heavenly shore with the storms all past forevermore. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Hopefully all of us tonight will hold fast. We will continue without wavering, focused on the Christ, the Son of God, Jesus himself. Thankful, uh, we are thankful uh, for all the blessings and promises that we have, but we want to make sure we continue to live out our destiny, and that is as faithful Christians, persevering and looking forward to an eternal home in heaven. Thank you for being with us this evening. We hope to see everyone Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, for our next worship service at 2201 Hickory Avenue in Harahan. Have a great rest of the night. Take care and God bless.